As any boater knows, a bilge pump is an important piece of equipment on any boat for obvious reasons. In order to stay afloat, you gotta keep water out of the boat. Oddly enough, the US Coast Guard does not even require bilge pumps to be installed on a boat. European standards require that you have a manual bilge pump. Electric bilge pumps are really the way to go for keeping nuisance water out of the boat and for emergency situations. It's nice to have a hand pump for backup, but an electric pump is really the way to go. Today's modern electric bilge pumps are fairly reliable. They need to be replaced every now and then, but they're, they're fairly good pieces of equipment. Most of the pumps are going to be this kind of pump. This is a Rule 1100 12 volt electric centrifugal or submersible pump. Basically, you stick this down in the bilge, wire it up, and it'll keep your bilges dry, at least hopefully. I'm Captain Wayne Canning, Master Boat Builder and Marine Surveyor. Today I'm back aboard the Lagoon 38 and the owner has requested that we install electric bilge pumps. This boat is equipped from the factory with only hand pumps. It also has a system with valves that you can use the shower sump pump to pump the bilges out. He didn't really feel this is very satisfactory and I tend to agree with him. I think a dedicated bilge pump is important. I was hoping to install a little bit bigger bilge pump than this unit, but he's got a very narrow keel, so we can only go so deep and so, only go so wide with the bilge pump. The 1100 pump's a pretty good sized pump, so that should work. We also can use the shower sump pumps as a backup, so technically we do have two bilge pumps. Another option would have been to install a diaphragm type pump where we could remote mount it above the bilge and run a hose down into the narrow part of the bilge to suck out the water. That's always a fairly good option, but the problem with that is those pumps are more expensive than the submersible pumps, and they also tend to clog more readily. So a submersible pump is a good, good solution for this particular boat. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna install one pump in each hull, run, the, run a hose aft and out a through hull above the water line in the engine compartment. We're going to wire it up so that it'll have an automatic float switch, which is a nice safety feature as well. We're also going to install a roll high water alarm. I think these are very important to have on most boats as well, because you don't, if you're out at the helm, you don't always know what's going on down in the bilge. So this is a, uh, a light and an audio alarm, the audio alarm being the most important part of it, and we're going to mount this unit out by the dash. As you can see, it's about the size of a regular dash gauge, so it'll fit up there fairly well. It'll be right there at the helm, so that uh, anyone operating the boat will obviously hear it go off fairly easily. Also, being on the outside of the boat, if the alarm should go off when the owner's not around, Hopefully, the dock master or somebody else on the dock will hear the alarm going off and investigate it. So definitely, high water alarm is a good piece of equipment to have. It's also now required by the American Boat and Yacht Council for boats built after, I think it's 2000. Not quite sure about that date, but at any rate, it's a good piece of equipment to have. And while we're installing the pumps and putting in float switches and everything, now's a good time to go ahead and install it. So let's get started. As can be seen, we have a fairly narrow keel sump in this bilge. And it's going to be rather difficult to get down there and screw the pump down. So what I've done is I've got this piece of aluminum flat bar and I've bent a flat on one end that the pump will then sit on. And I will drill and tap that for the pump to go on to that end. And then up at this end, I've bent it so that it'll sit and I can screw it on the edge of the keel. Then we can just drop that down there with the pump on it and be ready to go, just like that. What I've done is I've dropped this into the bilge and I've marked the height to where the turn of the keel is. So now what I'm gonna do is bend it just like I've bent this other end. And the trick I'm doing is I've found a bit of a slot in the dock and I'm just gonna drop that in there to that mark and then we'll just give it a quick bend over. And I'm not going to bend it at quite 90 because the keel doesn't intersect at a 90. But I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that. There we go. That should work pretty good. The next step is I'm going to round all these hard corners just to clean it up a little bit. 
using my angle drill with the little mushroom grinder and a, um, and a disc on there, I'm just going to round off these corners a little bit and clean up the edges. Okay, as you can see that gets rid of the sharp edges, just makes it look a little more professional. The next step is I'm going to um, drill holes to mount the bilge pump on here. And I'm going to drill holes in the top for where the screws are going to go to hold it down. After that, we're going to add a bracket for the high water float switch, but I'll show you that in a few minutes. First, let's get the holes drilled in. Alright, now that I've got the shapes all bent and everything, the next step is I've cut a couple of... Um, smaller pieces here. What I'm going to do is, you can see, the bilge pump will mount here like this. But I also want to mount this float switch. So I've got this little flat piece of aluminum, and I'm going to mount that underneath the bilge pump, which will give me an area to mount the float switch there. It used to be that they had little brackets that would come with these pumps, but they weren't very strong anyhow, so I kind of tend to like using the um, piece of aluminum to extend it. I'm also going to mount this a little bit above the pump so that I can add another float switch up here for the high water alarm. So we'll drill and tap all of this so that this will all fit together. Okay, first thing I'll do is drill where the bilge pump's going to sit. I'm going to push that right up there. I'm going to leave a little bit off of there. Then I'm going to mark these holes. Here I need to get a new drill bit because that one's bent. Always something. Alright, let's see if that one looks a little better. Right yeah, that's much better. All right, now tap these real quick. The beauty of working with this aluminum is it's relatively soft and easy to work with. And I did forget to mention that all of these aluminum pieces that I'm using here, the flat and the uh, angled aluminum, you can get all of this at Home Depot or Lowe's or regular uh, Ace type hardware store, someplace like that. It's a little pricey, but when you just need a couple of small pieces like this to do a little project like this, it, it's well worth it. So it, the convenience just makes it so easy. You don't have to get order an eight foot chunk or anything. You can buy it in two foot lengths, 48 inches, whatever you need. So it works out well, even though you pay a little bit more for it. I'll wrap that on there like that. I have to drill a couple of holes in here. I'm going to go with a little bit bigger drill bit because I don't really want to tap those holes. The other screws can just get through them. Set that there. Once again, we'll just do a quick. A couple of dimples in here. that work now. Hopefully we can make that work. Uh, then we're going to mount the bilge pump on this side. And these holes we're going to want to drill and tap. So we'll back to our smaller drill bit. And we'll put one right on the edge on the center. And it's going to sit right there. 
there. Line that up there. All I need to do is mark that a little bit. There we go. There's our assembly. Load switch, bilge pump. Final step is we're going to have this right up here for our high water. So let's start by drilling our bigger holes through here first. Alright. We'll hold that with a pair of pliers so I don't hurt myself if that thing should snag. Switch. There we go. There's the whole assembly. We'll be able to drop this down into the bilge. What I'll do is I'll pull these wires up and I'll wire tie them to this assembly. And I'll be able to just lower that whole assembly in the bilge. That'll be the float switch for the bilge pump and then the float switch for the high water line. 